first, uh -oh. look at me, sorry. First, I will have some lentil soup. I'm gonna have one big scoop. Yeah. Now, my host here is saying this is her first time making it. It is my first time making it. So, do you want one dip yourself? No, go ahead. Okay, no, I'm good with one dip first because you said it might be spicy. Yeah, a little You bit. see? And so, let's get some water. Got some Arabic bread. It's so hard because I we like spicy all the time, so nothing is spicy for me. Oh, okay. Oh. That's the problem. <laughs> okay. Now I got the camera on over. Oh, trying to have the camera on the food. You yeah. know what I mean? But this is really chill. It's not like proper setting, so just do whatever you need to do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm trying to have it on the food, not necessarily per se you, but. Okay. okay, so bon appetit. Yes, and the camera's rolling. Now okay. I will turn on for this. Now will you be able to talk in I'll try. Well, let's see. I let's it, see I how think, we do. I think it'll make it interesting. Would it to um um how would it how what's the process it. Process it, exactly. Thank you. So we have an issue with processing and packaging. Yes. Which is a big issue. Manufacturing. Like manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So we talk, like, let's use mango. So we have billion, I don't know, we have so many mango trees. Mm -hmm. And we end up, like, just throwing a lot of mangoes just because we are not processing, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, that second, third, you know, use of the mangoes. Like, that's not something we know how. Like, you, you have, you go to... The Philippines or you know Thailand, you have like the dry mangoes packaged very nicely mm -hmm. that we enjoy when we at the airport. Yes, but I was like, why don't we have this in Senegal, mm -hmm. right? Um, so those those are the issues that we have is that you know the resources are there, you know the raw products are there, but we do not have the the material nor the skills, right, mm -hmm. to uh, to put it in uh, you know final product. So gotcha. that's one issue. This so you're basically talking about the value chain of a product is what you're talking about. The value chain of the product, mm -hmm. exactly. So it's just not, you know, like I said, we have all of we have all of the raw product, right. the raw material, right? But like even the cashew nuts that I go and buy here mm -hmm. is like, you know, it's there, but it's like just taking it from from that raw material, process it, package it, label it. Right, mm -hmm. FDA approving everything and then sell it overseas is problematic because yes. th just that is, is there's not a proper chain, you know, and then you and then that's that's one big problem. The second big the second big problem that we have is education. Mm -hmm. Our education again as um, a product of uh, France yes. and colonized by the French. That French education is you know minus zero. <laughs> Let's just say it, um, and you know we speaking we speaking right now. Mm -hmm. If you notice, yes. the francophone Africa and the anglophone Africa is different. The small. growth is there's a reason why Nigerian, you know, uh, you know, folks from Rwanda and all that are like growing and like surpassing the Cote d'Ivoire or Senegal because mm -hmm. we speak French. Everything is in English. Yes. It is the international language. So if if we have educators, right, to help us, pretty much we just need to wake up. The world has <laughs> gone. And that's, that's it. But with that, so we're talking about businesses. So yes, there's that, you know, products. But then there's also education, STEM education. Yes. You're not hearing, why won't Senegal be part of that that the the discussion about space why are we not mm -hmm. in that discussion about mm -hmm. stem and you know you know kids are smart but again they don't have the opportunities most schools do not even have a computer you know where kids can do research it's in, like the laboratories are they they don't even exist in most schools, most schools to be honest with you so there is that so education is also another um you know, area of growth that's absolutely needed in Senegal for many, many reasons. Okay, and so, so are you saying that if someone came and opened up uh, private schools um, that, let's say, catered toward 
um, English to, to, to bridge that gap with them speaking more like French? Or? There's that, but also more focus on trade. Ah. skills okay that's the issue it's You're like talking about vocation vocation yes. so the thing is this so in the way we are taught especially in the the French education system it's just about study your book study your book so many many kids they're like finish you know universities high school university and they don't have any skills this is nothing right so and now there are conversation and people are realizing that oh our children they don't have any skills like you leave high school you leave university and you don't have no skills mm -hmm. not everybody is going to be a college educated, a, a college educated mm -hmm. right some people want to be electricians some people want to be plumbers some people want to be something else so there's a trade schools are absolute mm -hmm. need in senegal absolute need and when i say trade schools it's trade schools with the with the latest and improve technology, right? Gotcha. So I'm not talking gotcha. about like so when you when we let, let's say when we say packaging for example. Yes. Right? You know, you go to Senegal today, someone makes you a package, okay, little improved, but it's not properly sealed. So mm -hmm. then therefore, you know, the item might, you know, last frankly to be honest. Yes. So there's all of these issues we have. So little technology. You're talking about AI, you know, security system. Mm -hmm. right okay africa is at a crossroad a very dangerous crossroads to be honest with you with you know mali the terrorists nigeria yes. and you know we are in a very weird space right mm -hmm. so okay how long can we keep this space how long can we be secure right so there's a lot of um in my humble opinion i think also there's a lot of improvement that needs to do it's just like again having those little technology and that comes with trade you know skills vocation in general and like you know having those kids learn different technology you know um, well that trade too as you know allows smaller business to scale up of course. because it gives them more currency to get their expand their business and exactly. then they can hire people bring in new technology and things exactly. like that exactly um but the last if, if, if ahead, i yeah. lose my thought here the last the last business that i think is an absolute necessity is healthcare okay wow yes. um and 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 when i say healthcare i'm talking about the whole chain of healthcare okay okay, okay. <laughs> so uh we do have a good system a lot of the 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 doctors are they come from the re the region and they study in senegal and then they go to morocco for their finals and stuff like that but healthcare the whole the whole system the education the material um the 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 um you know the the, the infrastructure like the, the including whole, pharmacy, pharmacy and all, of that. all mm -hmm. of that so there's just a whole chain there that's just all messed up like okay and, you know and it's not about like um and, 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 and it's sad because you know we get a lot of material donated for you know cancer research and stuff mm -hmm. like that like the when i was mentioning the laboratories they don't exist you know and the mm -hmm. ones that are there are really like very poorly fund, funded, funded and yes. stuff like that so the whole healthcare so as you talk about so you see what i'm saying you have healthcare because mm -hmm. you need people healthy yes. so they can live long lives so they can back into shit <laughs> sorry my language <laughs> that's okay you need people educated yes okay and have a skills so they those people that are not going to be doctors and engineers can be our plumbers and electricians you know, in our security technician and so on, mm -hmm. right? Then you need food for people to eat. So think about it. So if you have the healthcare taking care of education and you have food for your population, you're gonna grow. You're basically looking at a dynamic circle. I, exactly. I, I see what you're doing. I you're see, just I, gonna, yes. you're just gonna grow, right? Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's really, these are just very, they're just linked. But what, what we struggle with is just like, we, we 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 are not thinking about it as like like you said like a chain mm -hmm. so it's just like we do one here and we forget about the other mm -hmm. and we forget about the other and because you're forgetting about, that they're interlinked in many ways exactly and when you talk about healthcare and that education and then how do we bring the 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 young woman how do we bring the woman right into this picture how do we you know um how how do we involve them from from the beginning to the end, mm. right? 
Well, um, women, women so. typically multitask far better than men. We, we have our own unique skill set, even though we need them. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's room, room for them. But that's also like what you were saying too about education and mind change. So um, people's mind change and perspectives about a lot of things would have to uh, gravitate towards that. Because you could have a woman sitting here giving birth, she's cooking dinner. Also, she's washing clothes at the same time, and people are wondering how. Yeah. I mean, but we both tie tasks that way, right? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's how. I how. mean, you don't. And then, <clears throat> lastly, money. Yeah. And when I say money, I'm talking about banking. Yes. Um, banking is a struggle. Our banking system is not. It's not. It's not. Um, it's not for entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. There is no you know loan for entrepreneurs or like um there's not like a good um, business model for entrepreneurs mm -hmm. um, the way senegal is aside from the rate or the 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 you know aside from the 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 interest rate being high and all there's just not a system like you talk about sba in the united states mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so there's no such thing mm -hmm. like i mean there's all of these different um you know Offices that the government's tried to put out there, but frankly, you still think they're broken. Still, well, they're broken in so many sense because, like, you know, someone that has the skills or someone that can do something, right? They mm -hmm. have the skills, but they need money. You start asking them for collateral. What the hell are they going to give you themselves? So if we have truth, now you know the truth can be said about the SBA. I can give you a personal That's testimony true. about this. That's true. But but SP, the, the one thing about Senegal is like there is no structure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So today you can tell me something about SBA because you've known, you've gone through the process. Maybe you did True. not get it, True. but you know, you knew what to do and you knew your recourse. Today, okay, I go true. to Senegal, that's true. and I'm like, okay, I want to open up a business. Where do I go? They're like, okay, go to this bank. You go to this bank and everything is confusing and you hardly don't find anything on the internet. And the last thing I want to say is communication. Okay. Communication is important. Right now, um, you know, a lot of, you can go to so many areas in Senegal that's not on Google Map. That's problematic. We need that, that whole... Uh, geolocation. The geolocation is important, right? And that's like a big business right there. Yes, it is. But it's not only there either, it's a lot. Because, look, but yes. I yeah, know, but the geolocation will help the tourism industry of course it will it will help it will help the businesses lots of lots of them so it's just everything you touch in africa is a jewel yes right and it's just a matter of like understanding that jewel understanding and connecting the dots because nothing is by itself just like that everything is connected yes yes um and yes. with a lack of education right um and you know, teaching someone a trade, you know, skills and stuff. It's just not about the skills. It's about the skills. It's about, it's about, you know, being a manager. It's about being an entrepreneur. It's about building, growing, you know, it's, it's, it's everything. But it's something you said, even though it's not a, in my initial thought, but it's, mm -hmm. I, I want us to, 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 to delve into that. Yeah, when you sure. talked about Anglophone and Francophone countries. Mm -hmm. There's 22 Francophone countries. And those 22, it has been researched that they are the richest mm. in mm. terms of natural resources and what we know on the periodic table yeah. of, of, of things. Mm. And so when you think about them being Francophone countries and France continuously having her hand in a lot of business on the continent, if, if just those 22 countries alone were to say, hey, it's time to stop the badness. Mm. We're going to unify. And, and, and let's say if we don't even want to do our own manufacturing, but the natural resources that we have, we know how valuable they are, mm. i.e. Mm. cobalt, mm -hmm. bauxite, uh, <laughs> manganese, the, these kinds of natural resources, and make these other nations pay more money. Mm. Do you think that could be viable source just in terms of the West seeing her as a real player? My, my personal contention is that she's she's never going to, meaning Mama Africa won't mm -hmm. be seen as a real player. 
because of the lack of unification of, of all the nations. Even though you have the African Union, I'm talking about doable things right now. Mm -hmm. And so if you just took those 22 Francophone countries and they united and said, anybody comes to us, no, you, like a union, mm -hmm. <laughs> like a union in America. And you know how unions were in, 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 in the uh, Midwest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that could enact and foster a lot of change itself on the continent? Yes, but it ain't gonna happen. Because those 22 countries, they're all different. Of course, yes. But we want but, collectivism and unity. I know. And, well, let me, let me, I don't know. And we live in a pipe dream, Maya. No, Tell I'm me not, if I live in a pipe but dream. But here's the thing. I'm not God, so I shouldn't even say it won't happen, but it ain't going to happen anytime soon. Well, why Because you know why? Why? It's not, it's about our leaders. Mm. If you, you look at, now, I'm going to give you an example of like many of the latest fashionistas or designers in, in Africa. Yes, what are they doing? Senegal. Go ahead. Senegal mm -hmm. and other countries, what are they doing? They're going to Nigeria. They're going to Ivory Coast. They're talking to each other. They're doing this, you know, African fashion show, bringing the other designers into the picture. So we are what we we as we as the youth, the younger generation, we understand how this work, right? So we understand that by us working together and collaborating, we are stronger, mm -hmm. and we are helping each other. Yes. But our leaders, they they don't think like that for many reasons, because it's all about their money. It's all about the pack. How much do I earn from X? Mm -hmm. So yes, it would be great if we can come together. And mm -hmm. that's the way forward. The only way forward is to come together. Yes. But throughout the world, I mean, you see, you know, nation coming together are very long and difficult process. It, it is. Right? You it know, is. you can think of, you know, you know, wars. I mean, there's all of these things, right? Like, Senegal wouldn't be like, oh, I'm going to be hanging out with Mali. Why? Why would they do that? They never do that. Because of the history. Here you go. Even so, so again, so that's why I say, "What well, do you think I'm living? In, do you think I'm living a pipe dream when I say that?" And I've long said too. I'm, I mean, there's I like, may not be alive when it occurs. There, is, there are like resources, yes. there, but there is also a, a real political challenges as well. Yeah, right. That you know, we should not you know just um, negate or be a witness negate, to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. it's, it's reality. Okay. Right? Okay. So, but but I, but that's not to say that doesn't stop the diaspora and would not stop you know, um, the younger generation for collaborating and trying to build yes. build something, you know, and it could be like, you know, building something in the fashion, building something in agriculture, really, you know, you, things can happen, yes. right? But as far as nation coming together, I think that would be very difficult in a long, long, long process. And we can't wait for that. We need to keep moving. We need, we need to keep moving. You know, so I wouldn't say family without mentioning my kids. I have two grown Kids that they need to get the hell out of my house. Uh oh. But um, as far as future, really, for us, I'm grateful that my husband is also from Senegal. So for us, we're going home. We're going home. We're going back to Senegal. In five years, God's willing, we're going to retire. And um, yeah, I can hear my voice. I'm not that old. But I'm retiring. I'm retiring way below 50, which is, so I'm grateful for that. Um, so we're retiring and we're going back home and going back home to do what now, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's still in the works, uh, but we are the type of people that we've been very grateful. We've had an amazing journey. We're not looking to be rich. We will be okay. But I think we, uh, for me, retiring is really reconnecting back to my roots. Yes. Um, and I need it. I need this as a person. <laughs> um, it's something that's missing. Um, and, and I need it. And I've been, you know, wanting it for so, so, so long. And it's now more than never, it's very clear that uh, Senegal is where I belong and that's where I'm going to be. I do not, I enjoy traveling the world. Um, I enjoy, I ain't going back to America to leave ever again. Let me just put that out there. Okay, understood. Um, so, but I enjoy traveling, so I'll continue to travel. 
but I want to go back home to build um, to build me uh, I want to go back home to reconnect but I want to go back home mainly to give back to my community um, with all the knowledge and wealth that I built over the years I want to go back to to really help people um, and helping people mainly my focus is really starting an NGO yes. for incarcerated women yes. uh, and helping them get back into society. Um, and that's really my focus. Um, and that's what I want to do. Um, so, you know, along the way, if, I'm, if I pick up another, you know, I love cooking. Uh, I'm not opening a restaurant, <laughs> but I can see myself organizing some mini afternoon teas. Mm -hmm. Um, um, so I can do that because uh, I enjoy doing it. <laughs> I love interior decoration, decoration that mm -hmm. I like. I'm an interior designer at heart. Um, you don't see my house, but for people hearing me, I love, love that. Um, and I love to bring every, uh, every place that I've lived or visited. I always want to take a piece of that place with me. Yes. Um, so I want to go back, um, and really, if anything, as a hobby, I, I definitely want to, uh, you know, do some interior design work for sure. And as what I'm doing currently, uh, it's also giving me a lot of exposure to a lot of amazing creative director, amazing um, architecture, mm -hmm. uh, architect uh, and designers. So that alone just, uh, you know, fulfill my dream. Right. Uh, I, to know, make all of it just to come, make, yeah, to come, come together. Come, come yeah. together. That's kind of what I, what, yeah. So in five years is retirement. Um, and um, I hope with some of the great moments that I've met in Dubai and around the world, we'll be able to put our brands together and come up with, um, you know, something nice, a business or what have you. But, um, but yeah, but mainly my main focus is really starting an NGO and giving back to the community, and that's really my main focus. I love that. I love that because I, 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 myself with a partner, you know, I have one in Ghana. I mm -hmm. love that. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So now we're going to switch and change focus here. Yes. So um, there has been rumblings for years about jollof rice cooking Senegal. Who owns it? Where did it start? Blah, blah, blah. So first, before we get into that, let's talk about what is your favorite style of food? Are you just a foodie at heart, or do you have one specific type of food that you like? So it's a great question because I like good food. So okay. I like everything. I cook everything. I like good food. Um, so I'm not, it's not, I'm not specific. Um, and I, and I, you know, I, you know. I'm just a good cook, so anything <laughs> I want to do, I make. Um, but you do um, like spicy. You said you like spicy. So I like spicy food, and, and if it's not spicy, I can eat. But we, we, you know, Senegalese, most of us, we cook spicy, and we like spicy food. So I don't know um, otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> so you give me pasta, I'm gonna make it spicy. Uh, no, but not. But obviously, certain things are not gonna be too too spicy. I get it. But um, you know, we we eat. We like flavor. You know, we like flavor. We like things to be, you know, we, we like that journey with food. Yes. Right? Um, um, yeah. So, if I come to your house and I don't eat that, means your food ain't any good. So. Oh, wow. Ooh. So. Noted. But, you know. Noted. Not that. I won't be <laughs> Well, I, I can't invite you over because, you know, I don't like the, I, I can't do the spicy too much. I don't know. But, I, I but can if, serve you tea and desserts so wait, like this. If you, if you, if you, if you cook something and you have like a spicy sauce, you watch me with that spicy sauce. That is hilarious. Or oh, I tell you but to bring no, some in your bag. As they say, put some hot sauce, in your, bag, sauce in your bag. Bring your, bring your spicy yeah. sauce in but your no, bag. But no, I, 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 we love food and, um, but, but yeah, and then, um. Yeah, so I don't have a, a, a style or gotcha. a, 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 like a dish. Um, I, I like good food and, okay. and I mix okay. it up for my family and myself. So it, it's always spicing it up in my household. So when you talk about your siblings and your mom being the third wife, when did you actually start cooking mm. for everyone? Mm. How old were you? When you started cooking for everyone in the so house. So I'll take you back to my bougie lifestyle. Yes, your bougie, your bougie, your bougie. So, which is very interesting you've asked. Okay. Because this is another story that many people don't know. Uh-oh. 
when I was, um, you know, growing up, never cooked, never watched my drawers, never did nothing, never house chores, never nothing. You just study, it was just study and being good. And as I told you earlier, I wasn't that good, so <laughs> my study well. But uh, so, so it's interesting because we've always had. Um, Evan. Go ahead. Um, so, but, but yes, yeah, so I, um, so yeah, we've never had to really, um, you know, cook or do anything house chores, which was very interesting. I mean, my mom would try here and there, but we always had, you know, house help. We've always had, so I've never really done what I'm doing now in my life. I didn't do when I was, you know, uh, in Senegal. Teenager, okay. In Senegal. Okay. So you asked me cooking. Mm hmm. So it's actually uh, um, my um, my uh, my son's father that was a cook was a chef. This guy, you gonna go there? He was a chef. So and he taught me how to cook. Really? So this is news. Nobody knows this. So he taught me how to cook. He was a chef in New York City, and he was an amazing. He, well, I, I hope he's alive. I hope you're alive. I don't know. But in any case, he taught me how to cook, uh, and he was a cook. So when I was with him, you know, he would cook, and I would, and, and literally, he taught me how to cook jollof rice. It's crazy. He was Senegalese as well, and and seeing him cooking, and he's he was an, he's really an amazing chef he makes everything like he was working at a steakhouse he's just amazing and he loved to cook so my love for cooking frankly came from him so wait a minute Maya so when you when you were a kid you never had your mom's actual cooking no so Not you've really. never tasted anything your mother ever cooked no I did but it, but but in Senegal and even to this day many people have house help and cooks sure. in their household. So my mom was a businesswoman and my okay. mom would go, you know, for, you know, weeks or months sometimes traveling, traveling and okay. doing business. So, you know, my mom would cook, but it was very, um, we just, like, I remember my, my mom would cook and she's a good cook, but a lot of it, because she was also entertaining people a lot. Mm. So the entertainment part of of entertaining people and making my table look fancy and doing dishes that came from my mom okay but the actual cooking came from someone totally different because wow. my mom would entertain a lot of people because my dad was a politician so a lot of people would come to our household for dinners and receptions and stuff so making things nice and entertaining people that was just my mom's job because she was the prettiest out of all the other uh, and she's the intellectual out of all the other wives. So, love the other wives, but uh, my mom was the prettiest. And Aww. was the sexiest. Oh, uh, and you know. I mean, you ain't just, too shabby yourself. She, she just, she was just like, hey, she was just, you know, sex. She was just, she had it together. She had it together. <laughs> she had it together. So, and, and, uh, yeah, so, you know, as an African man, my, my dad had always just, showing her off all the time wow. so that was, that was also part of being a politician right mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. so that's, that was all that was all that that i lived in that okay um so so, so, so that's interesting then so okay so since you got your let's say your true love for the art of cooking came from you got entertaining from mom but the art of cooking came from from a man, from a man. it came from a man tell me about jollof rice where did jollof, the name, originate? And who makes the best jollof rice? I, I want it on the podcast here. I want it on my YouTube channel. I mean, I need it out there. So, um, brothers and sisters. Tell them. Don't get this one, please. <laughs> jollof is the word in Wolof. Yeah, hear me? Jollof is the word in Wolof. <laughs> and Wolof is Senegalese, West Africa, specifically in the car. Okay, so let's get that straight. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so it's like, hey, 
where John originated from? You're like, oh, well, John is in Nigeria, in Kenya. <laughs> well, John came from America. Okay, people, get it together. Because in French, it's called Jean. Jean, Jean, Luc. So, <laughs> Jolof is the word in Wolof. You see how that rhymes? Jolof yes. is the word in Wolof. Dakar, Senegal, West Africa. Thank you very much. Now, Obviously, naturally, jollof rice came from the car. It came from Senegal. Do we make the best jollof rice hands down? I mean, you know, like, I, I mean, I don't even know. Like, look, we be sitting, we're not even trying to referee between the Ghanaian and the Nigerian. Yes. Right? Brothers and sisters, y'all go sit down. Okay? Now, y'all can make your own jollof rice, call it jollof, call it wherever the hell you want. We let you have it. We let you have it. Y'all can't, you know, I just say this. Y'all can't just argue day and night about your jollof rice, how, whatever. But you know what? We make the best. Y'all know it. That's why y'all don't even call out a name out when y'all doing your foolishness. Y'all not even talking about the car. This is Y'all don't even talk about Senegal. Y'all not even talk about the wall off. You're like, we better leave them out of this. Yes. Okay, so is... Is this ongoing, uh, let I don't even want to call it feud, I'm going to say competition. Is it because I remember you telling me the story about how young children learn how to make jollof. Is that the reason why? Because from an early age that they're taught how to, you know, make the ingredients and all of that stuff. And so they basically perfect like a craft over time. It's true. I mean, so most young African, most Senegalese, most Senegalese women, girls, young girls, they learn how to cook at a very early age. Mm -hmm. Most of them, most of them learn how to cook. Mm -hmm. um, most of them, because that's just how, that is part of our, when I said earlier that we're very hospitable. Um, and, 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 uh, and also the other thing is, another reason why they learn how to cook, sometimes people don't have the means to have cooks or means to have helpers so then they have these they have their young girls they start teaching them how to cook at a very early age and part of cooking and part of, part of knowing how to cook is also a, a strategy of holding your man mm. in, in the in the african community and really in the senegalese community i want to say here is that part of cooking and taking care of household is a is a craft Yes. So, for so for many for many young girls in Senegal, you learn that at an early age. So I learned my craft of the table from my mom, mm -hmm. right? And I learned the craft of cooking and loving food from a, a man and you know my son's father. So, um, but but most 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 young girls in Senegal know how to cook for out of necessity. Or just part of their upbringing. Okay. Um, but okay. as I said, I had a bougie lifestyle, so people didn't bother me too much about the cooking part of it. But um, but yeah, but I'm grateful. So I, to this day, I'm like, oh my god, like if I didn't learn how to cook, you know, my husband now is like he. We barely. My husband barely goes out to a restaurant because he has amazing food at home. Yes. So there's never a need to go to a restaurant. And I go to a restaurant all the time just for the social aspect. And the experience, and the right? Experience. Okay. Uh, but, um, so yeah, so it's, 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 it's important. And, and I, I, I just love food. I love cooking. Um, and it's just, uh, it's a stress reliever for me. Good, um, good, Which good. is good. So I, is. I'm, I'm in my happiest moment when I'm in my kitchen. Okay. So if I was, in, if I was a newcomer, I've been to Senegal myself personally, <laughs> but if I was a newcomer coming to Senegal, Tell me three dishes I should try. So jollof rice. Well, every okay, single, come on. Every this single. hands down, Maya. Okay. Uh, so you have so, to come up with three new ones. <laughs> I am, I am, I am. Okay. So I'm like jollof rice. The peanut rice is really good. It's mm. called mafe. It's yes, the, yes. Okay. The, the, the peanut sauce with with rice over rice. Um, there is another one called uh, we we make amazing fried rice called chebuyapu. 
um, and it's the yaku is the is the is the is the meat. So we make amazing uh, fried rice as well, different from whatever you, what you've had, different from the Pakistani or Indian. So totally different. Uh, another dish that I enjoy a lot is called supukanja, and that Supukanya, is with the yes. ok okra sauce yes. and with the palm oil. That is one of my favorite because you can eat it with with rice over yes. rice. You can eat it with fufu. Uh, I love that a lot. But keep in mind, Senegalese, we eat a lot of like frying and oil and you know, it's all of, all of that that I, that I enjoy okay. a lot. Okay, right? well no, no, that was three good. But wait, but wait, the last one that I would be remiss if I didn't mention is called the DB. Okay. The DB, D-I-B-I, the DB is more for nighttime for dinner. And that is just the barbecue meat. Yes, okay. That's okay, the barbecue okay. meat with the onion and the mustard yes. and all of that. Okay. So that's a big deal of that. Okay, okay. Now. And when and me as when every time I go, so it's interesting because I cook a lot obviously being overseas and it doesn't matter where I am, I always cook my African dishes. But Dibi is one dish the first day I come to Senegal, my parents they know to have Dibi ready for me. Whether I I land in the morning, whether I land in the middle of the day, or whether I land at night, this I'm nice. having DB. So, if there's anything I crave when I go to Senegal, it's, it's the, the DB because okay. it's just the way they make it. It's special. You can never imitate the DB outside of Senegal. It's, they just make the best. Okay, and tell me the name three shops that someone should visit. The first time coming to Senegal, like maybe your favorite shops that you would, you'd have to go to if you were home. Oh my God! So it's hard. So so, and I don't know. Are you talking about like clothing? Yes. Or so let me tell you though. Um, I don't know a favorite shop necessarily, but there are more and more shops that are opening up now in Senegal. Yes. And frankly, I know the one is a, a consignment shop called Sassy Boutique. And she's amazing. She has amazing. I actually uh, bought a jacket from her. There's also this lady called Nene Yaya. She makes amazing bags. So my blue, the person.